Hi, my name is Norman. Let's build another custom watch. Here are all the components which we're going to use today for our build. And as always, we're going to start from the outside with the case. It's made by Tokai Lab and the design is heavily inspired by the 62 mass uh, vintage Psycho Diver. At 40.5 millimeters, it's a little bit larger than what I'm, I usually prefer. But just look at those polished beveled edges here and the brushed finishes, it's just gorgeous. Yeah, that's a really, really well made case. Before we install the crystal, we have to put in the chapter ring first. I'm pretty sure you cannot patent some generic design like a chapter ring. I don't know why, but for some reason you cannot find an aftermarket chapter ring with the same design as the original Psycho chapter ring. So I sourced an original Psycho made chapter ring, uh, made of plastic unfortunately, but uh, that's the only one to have the exact same look which I wanted to have on this watch. Installing the chapter ring is probably one of the easier tasks here in this build. The only thing which you need to keep in mind is that on the underside of the chapter ring there's a little notch here and uh, it needs to go into the detent of the case at 12 o'clock. Some cases don't come with such detent then you need to file off the notch and some chapter rings don't come with a notch. In both cases then you need to um, use some double sided tape like VHB or something to keep everything in place. And now we're finally ready to install the crystal into the case. For that we're going to use the crystal press and the correctly sized die. But let's talk about the crystal itself first. I ordered it from Namoki Mods because they have a product line which comes with slimmer dimensions. With a slim bezel, case back and crystal you're going to save about a millimeter in height of the watch. Which honestly doesn't sound like much but uh, it's like 8% and that's pretty neat. Unfortunately it's very very hard to tell which side of the crystal is the inside and which side is the outside. Usually you can tell the sides apart from the chamfering on the edges, but this crystal is symmetrical, unfortunately. It's hard to find information about that, but I think the crystal has anti-reflective coating on just one side. Until this day, I'm still not sure if I selected the correct side, but I think this one is the side with anti-reflective coating, so this is going to be our inside. It actually requires a lot for us to get the crystal in there. I've heard a lot of crazy stories of people putting their crystal into the freezer and the case onto the heated bed of a 3D printer to use uh, thermal expansion to their advantage. But honestly, I'm just using brute force and that works too. And now let's install the bezel. As I mentioned before, the bezel is also from the Moki mods and the quality, as always from the Moki, is phenomenal. The polished coin edge almost works like the fluted bezel from a Rolex Datejust and it just brings a little bit more bling into the otherwise very toolish diver watch. To install the bezel I'm also using my crystal press and of course we need to swap out the top die to match the size of the bezel. One thing I like to do is bending up the springs a little bit of the unidirectional bezel um, that gives it a little stronger, a little bit more satisfying clicking action. And then it's just a matter of twist until it clicks. For now we're done with the outside so let's get to the inside of the watch. You guys know I love OEM Psycho dials because they are the only ones which I know of who make matte black dials. Aftermarket uh, manufacturers still haven't figured out how to do that. They always seem to have a semi-gloss finish. So Psycho dial it is. But it comes with the problem. Let me use this leftover OEM dial to show you what I mean. Most dials have little feet on the back side to keep the dial itself aligned with the movement. And the movement has a day and a date disc which is aligned with the crown at 3 o'clock. Well, that's because the case also does have its crown at 3 o'clock. So now when you put the dial onto the movement using the dial feet for alignment, you'll notice that the day is misaligned and the crown sticks out at 3.8 instead of 3 o'clock. 
And that's because the dial wasn't designed for this type of movement and this type of case. To get the dial realigned, in the past I just cut the dial feed off and used some sort of double-sided tape to attach the dial to the movement. But uh, this time we're gonna try something else. Uh, well, because the dial is more expensive than the movement, I thought this time I, I'd rather damage the movement than damage the dial. Yeah, I got this tiny 0.6 millimeter drill and I'm going to attempt to drill two new little holes for the dial feed to go in. So I'm going to use my sacrificial dial here as a reference to find out where I'm going to put my holes. And once I found the correct location, I'm using that pointy metal thing to mark it. And then it's just rinse and repeat for the opposing side. And now that we got all the markings done, we finally get into the danger zone. So if I mess this up, this is gonna be expensive and I have to buy a new movement. So I gotta make sure that I'm very, very careful now. Yeah, you can tell right away, this is the first test run of my vice clamps, the black 3D printed parts you see on camera. The movement keeps on falling out of the vice and uh, yeah, the, the clamps definitely need a little bit more rework until I can publish the files confidently. I'm well aware that all the dust is falling directly into the movement, which is very, very bad. But I have to rotate the movement that way because the the rotor on the back side of the movement um, would be in the way and of course I don't want to drill through the rotor. If I would do this again probably I would just uninstall the rotor and rotate the movement 180 degrees so that the dust falls just away from the movement. Well that was a little harsh breakthrough but luckily nothing was damaged so let's do that on the other side and see how it works. Yeah, <laughs> those vice clamps. I got lucky again, no damage on the movement. So let's get out the dust and put the dial onto the movement. <laughs> okay, what did I expect? So uh, yeah, a little bit of rework, but eventually I got it done. Now it's time to put on the <laughs> real dial. And of course it also needed a little persuasion so let's just say that fitting the movement to the dial was as smooth as a brick wall. I know that some of you may be concerned about getting metal shavings anywhere near the movement, and <laughs> rightfully so, but um, it's been a couple weeks since I built this watch and it has been running fine. So attaching the dial to the movement that way was sort of an experiment. And honestly, I'm not entirely sure if I'm gonna use this method in the future. Cutting off the dial feed and using adhesives seems just a little safer and simpler to me. I don't know, you decide. But now, enough dial talk, let's get to the hands. And the first thing to do is finding midnight. So that's when the date uh, disc starts to spin, just like that. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. The hands for this build are Tudor style snowflake hands painted white with a black center and BGW9 blue Swiss Luminova luminescent material. And now that we got that introduction out of the way, uh, yeah, first hand is the hour hand. I'm using Watchmaker's Putty, aka Rodico, to pick up the hand, and then I'm using the hand setting tool to uh, press fit that thing onto the post, or however you, you want to call it. I'm trying to get the hand as parallel as possible and also as close to midnight as I can. But with the hour hand, it doesn't matter too much because we can still use the crown to adjust it. So I like the position of the hour hand and basically it's rinse and repeat for the minute and for the seconds hand.
So I'm going to skip the boring part where I case this up and <laughs> let's just get straight to uh, the crown and stem installation. Hmm. The crown is from Watch and Style. It's knurled and it has an engraved S on the otherwise polished side. As usual, the crown stem is a little bit longer than uh, you need it, so uh, we need to cut it to size. To figure out how much I got to cut off, I install the uncut stem onto the crown. Then I install them into the movement and measure the distance between the crown tube and the crown itself. And that's what I use as a reference to cut the stem with a wire cutter. In the last watch modding video, I showed you a little trick to prevent the cutoffs from flying around. I didn't have a cloth at hand, so I thought this time uh, I'm just gonna use this plastic box. Yeah, guess what? Didn't work. Luckily, I found both halves and also learned that my calipers need to be demagnetized. And now it's just a matter of filing down the burrs left by the wire cutter and putting everything together. And now, last but not least, the bezel insert. It's also made by Toka Lab, black ceramic, white markers, and a non protruding loomed pip at 12 o'clock. But because we have the flat bezel made by Namoki, uh, we can't just, you know, put on the double sided tape and call it a day. Due to the savings in height, uh, only the outside of the bezel is actually rotating. Well, that's no big deal. Just put a double sided tape on the back side of the bezel insert as you usually would, and then use your hobby knife. Put on a fresh blade if possible and uh, just you know eyeball the cut. Then you should just be able to peel off the unwanted double-sided tape. I personally have never lost a bezel insert so far and I'm, I'm pretty sure that even half of the adhesion surface is still plenty of adhesion. So there you have it another custom watch. As you can tell I put it on an olive green ribbed NATO strap but honestly it's a black dial diver uh, yeah, it's basically gonna work with everything you throw at it. I just think that the rectangular hour markers work really really well together with the snowflake hands. And also, uh, I didn't knew that when ordering the dial, but the loom on the dial is crazy good. Like, it's one of the best, if not the best loom I've ever seen in my life on a watch. So I can highly recommend the dial and of course also Tokai Lab as a mod part supplier. I once had some uh, QC issues with them and they resolved them without any question asked. I just sent them a picture, told them there's something wrong and they said, we are happy to fix this. And this is something you cannot avoid making mistakes, but you can control how you react to those mistakes. And I think they did everything well. So uh, they deserve a little bit respect, a lot of respect for how they do that. Not affiliated or something, it's just my personal experience with them. So that being said, I think this is one of the best builds I've made so far and I'm really happy with the result. And if you are too, if you maybe also want to get started modding your watches or if you already are, let me know. And that being said, have a nice day everyone. Bye bye. <laughs>